because he's able. Anybody know that the Lord is able? Anybody know that the Lord is able to heal, to save? God, we love you. Anybody love the Lord? Good morning, Turner Chapel. Anybody love the Lord? <laughs> yes, Lord. This song says, Jesus, I love you. Yes, Lord.
Come on, I want to hear you sing it. Come on. Let's go to the throne of grace. Father God, we just come in no other name but the precious and the marvelous name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord. We just thank you for the love that you have given us, Father God. A love that, God, we cannot even have words to even adequately express, God. A love that loved you so much, that loved you, loved us so much that you gave your only begotten Son, Lord. Lord, yet while we were still sinners, you sent your Son to deserve to die for us, Lord, who were not even worthy. So, Lord, we just cannot give you enough praise. We thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this hour, for your spirit, for waking us up and letting us see another day, Lord. We know it's not because of anything we have done or because we are special, but it's just because of your grace and mercy, Father. And we just thank you, Father God, for you allowing us, for you giving us the clarity of our mind, the strength of our bodies, and Lord, the ability to come once again, Lord, whether we're in this building or whether we're watching virtually, Lord. We just thank you, Father God. Now, Father God, we just want to remove ourselves, Lord, and let you come in and have your way, God, in every part of this service, Father God, that you touch and you move, God, that you do what you do, Father God. We just thank you, God. We just thank you for what your, your word, Father God. We thank you for your power. We thank you that you are God, that no matter what is facing or what comes our way, God, you're bigger than whatever it may be, Father God. So we know, God, that you're the I am God. So, Lord, if we need love, you are, you are the I am, Lord. We need healing, you are the I am, God. We need deliverance, you are if you need saving in marriage, you are the I am, Lord. If it's a job, you are the I am, God. Whatever the need is, Father God, you are the I am. And so, God, we just thank you this morning, God, and we just give praise to your mighty name and the power that you have, Father God. Lord, we just help us to keep our eyes on you and not on the situation, Lord, but keep our eyes and keep our, on our knees and lay before you, Lord, so that you can do the great work. Father, we just come right now, Father God, lifting up the speaker of the hour, our Lord, our beloved servant, Pastor, Lord. We ask that you would use him in a mighty way, Lord, to glorify your name, Father God. Lord, as we continue to God to do your work, Father God, as we are in our mission, our Lord, to go share and invite, Lord. God, that we can share the word that when people come in here, they will feel the love of God. Most importantly, they will find you and have a relationship with you, Father God. Because, Father God, if they have a relationship with you, no matter what comes, Lord, they will stay with you, Father God. So we just pray that you would be with us, that you would touch those who come in this household, Father God, that you would move and touch in their life, God, and deliver and give them what they need in their time of need, Father. Father God, we just we just, just just thank you, Father God. We just praise your holy name, Father. Now, Lord, have your way, Father God. Lord, we just ask you to continue to bless Turner Chapel, Lord, spiritually, continue to bless us physically, and continue to bless us financially, Lord, so that we can do the work of the kingdom. And, Father, we'll be ever mindful to give you all the praise, and we'll give you all the glory, and we ask it all in the precious name of your Son, our Lord and Savior Christ, we pray. Amen. How great is our God. We've always heard the phrase, we've asked the question, but have you actually asked yourself, how great is our God? Can you stand to your feet and join us as we praise his name on high?
church this morning just to shout a little louder just to tell somebody and to show somebody how good God has been to me and I want God to know that I'll do anything for him raise your hand wave your hand in the air if you know that you'll do anything for God I don't care what they're doing what they're doing I will do anything for God because of what he's done for me I can never repay him amen
understand what this part means right now. Because I didn't truly understand what this part means right now until I went through a very hard time in my life. Very hard time. You would never believe it, but I had two parents, had two cancers, two different cancers, two years in a row. Thought I was gonna be an orphan real quick, okay? And I looked at the world and the world could do nothing for me. I felt nothing. The world could do nothing for me. But do you know the only thing that could fill me up, the only thing that could make me feel like I could go on for myself, for my brothers, for my parents, the only thing, the only one was God. And I said, God, I have to be where you are. I thought I was okay. When everything is going okay, when everything's going right, when your money's right, when everybody's healthy, everything's okay. You feel like, I got this. But God, when everything is going wrong, you have to have the faith of a mustard seed and God will do the rest. So this part just says, God, I have to be in your presence. I want to be where you are. I got to be where you are. I have no other choice. I want to be where. Everybody say, gotta be where you are. Declare this morning, say, I wanna be where you are. Say, I gotta be. Just to see you, hallelujah. to behold you as my king. You've already done enough. If you never do anything, you've already done enough, God. So I will do anything, anything, just to see you, to behold you as my king. I want to be where you are. I got to be where you are. want to be where you are. Got to be where you are. Say peace is where you are. Love is who you are, and joy is where you are, and grace is who you are. So for your glory, hallelujah, I will do anything. Just to see you, to behold you as my king. We want to be where you are, God. Thank you, 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 God. Gotta be where you are. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Joy is who you are. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And peace is where you are. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. I wanna be.
Cause the song is over, hallelujah, hallelujah, dwelling in your presence, living in your presence, hallelujah, 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 for your glory, for your glory, I'll do anything, for your glory. I'll do anything. Just to see you. Just for somebody who's going through right now. That might be struggling right now. That might have a situation just like uh, 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 Ivana was talking about right now. The song says, for your glory, I will do anything. Just to see you. As hard as it may be, that make me for your glory. I'll walk through this trial and tribulation that I have with my head held high, praising you all the way. For your glory, God, although the diagnosis didn't seem right, I, I'm going to walk through this all the way. For your glory, God, just because I lost a child doesn't mean that my life is over. For your glory, Lord. For your glory, I'll do anything. For your glory, I'll do anything. <laughs> God. For your glory. So that's for somebody who's streaming, somebody who's sitting here that has been a little bit downtrodden, that has gotten to the point that they say, I'm tired of this, I don't know how to keep going, but for your glory, God, for your glory. I don't understand the trial, I don't understand this tribulation that I'm going through right now, but for your glory, God, I'll go through it with both hands lifted up. I'll go through it with praise on my lips. I'll go through it knowing that there's victory on the other side. I'll go through it, God, but for your glory. Job, Job never asked for his trouble. God just said, have you considered my servant Job? Some of this trouble you hadn't asked for. But just maybe, just maybe, just maybe the life you've been living has you considered. And because you've been considered, that means you've been considered because God trusts you. God knows that you will give him glory through the ups and through the downs, through the good and through the bad. And that you'll stand forth and be boldly say, God, for your glory, I'm going to make it through this. For your glory, I'm going to do this. For your glory, I will lift my hands. I will lift my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know. But for the glory of God, walk through this season boldly knowing that he'll never leave you or forsake you. And if he'll never leave you or forsake you, that means as long as you stay with him, you are where he is. Thank you, praise team. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, praise team. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. 
Um, it is time for our morning announcements. We have just a few for you on this morning. Uh, and then we'll welcome our visitors uh, and uh, prepare for the ministry of giving. Our announcements this morning, simply this, the 2024 spring production is coming up uh, this weekend. Amen. Amen. The worship arts ministry and spring production entitled Trespass will be March 16th and 17th uh, at Kennesaw Mountain High School. Tickets are available in the lobby after service or you can go online and purchase tickets as well. Uh, so we are looking forward to everyone being there and being a part of the spring production 2024. Uh, our Keeping the Covenant Married Couples Ministry presents a seven-week Bible study course on Gary Chapman's book, Chapman's book, The Five Love Languages, The Secret to Love That Lasts. Each one of these love languages will be taught by a different married couple facilitator comprised of some of Turner's very own dynamic married duos. The classes will be held uh, beginning Monday, March 25th, starting at 7 p.m. In order to be a part of this class, you must register, so please uh, use the information on the screen or go to our website where you can register for this class, the five love languages. <clears throat> The 2024 college tour is upcoming. Sting Incorporated, the youth nonprofit organization, in partnership with Turner Chapel's Gap Youth Ministry, invites you to the 2024 college tour. That's April 1st through the 5th. Uh, representatives will be out in the lobby, uh, or you can contact Youth Pastor Wayne at wreynolds at turnerchapelame.org. Uh, so for the 2024 college tour this year. On next Sunday, we will be celebrating 159 years. It is our church anniversary on next Sunday. Amen. And our preacher on next Sunday will be Bishop James Davis, uh, who will be coming in and preaching for us for this service. So we are looking forward to everyone coming out and celebrating with us on, this, uh, on next Sunday uh, during our worship service as we celebrate 159 years of loving our neighbors, 159 years of loving each other, 159 years of loving God's word, 159 years of loving God. So we are thankful for this time, so please come out uh, on next Sunday and worship with us. Also, our Easter activities are upon us, and I am going to list off the Easter activities, and they will have more. The first is the drama ministry presents Jesus, his journey for us. On Friday, March 22nd, uh, 2024 at 7 p.m. right here in the sanctuary uh, at the cathedral. So please come out and join us and join the drama ministry uh, as we celebrate this passion, this time of leading up to Christ's uh, death and resurrection. Then we'll have our Palm Sunday service on March 24th, 2024, um, which will be that following Sunday or the Sunday after that, uh, where we celebrate this week before in this uh, time that Jesus rides in triumphantly. So we will have a celebration service on Palm Sunday. Uh, on Good Friday service on Friday, uh, March 29th, 2024, uh, at 7 p.m., we will have our Good Friday service where we will have seven of Turner Chapel's preachers giving you, giving you sermonettes on the last words of Christ. So please come out and join us here in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. The following day is Easter Fun Day, which is Saturday, March 30th, um, at, from 10.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. The youth ministry, Gap Youth Ministry, we will have our Easter Fun Day where we have food and games and prizes and the egg hunt. So please go out and register for attendance if your children or if you are coming out to attend. Please register for us so that we can have an accurate count uh, for food, uh, eggs, and candy for those kids uh, as well don't forget to drop off your donations in the baskets which are out in the lobby if you have not done so and of course all of this leads up to Sunday morning Sunday morning March 31st 2024 for Resurrection Sunday 
where we will come and celebrate a risen Christ once again. So we are looking forward to an awesome Easter Sunday. I'm going to give you just a little, little, little tip. Get here early. I'm just telling you, get here early. Get here early. Just be here. Uh, amen. Amen. Uh, with that being said, that, is, that concludes our announcements. This is now time for us to welcome our visitors. So if you are in the sanctuary visiting, please just raise your hand or you can stand. You can wave to us. Just let us know that you are here. Amen. Amen. We see you. And those that are online, you can please just drop us a message in the text or in the chat to let us know that you are here worshiping with us. We are so excited to have you here on this day. On behalf of our pastor and servant leader and our first lady, Lady Rita, we would like to just say welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, this is a church where we strive to show that we are loving God, that we are loving God's word, that we are loving each other, and that we are loving our neighbors. So we look forward to when the time comes for you to rise up, walk down that aisle, and say, this is the type of church and the place that I want to be. And we would love to have you with us uh, joining us for that service. So God bless you. At this time, uh, we would take a moment just to greet to welcome you, to give you a holy hug, to shake your hand, to uh, give you a fist bump, whatever level you feel comfortable. This is the time for us to fellowship. Amen. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. So easy. time. Ushers, you can uh, open the doors and allow those to come in. <clears throat> Amen. It is now time for our ministry of giving. Amen. This is the opportunity that you have to share the gifts that God has blessed you with. You will see on our screen the ways that you have to give, all of those electronic methods, and then uh, our address if you would like to mail in your tithes and offering. Also, for those who are inside the sanctuary, all you would need to do is just lift your envelope or lift your hand, and the usher will come around, and you can drop that offering in the envelope. This is the time that we give back 
to uh, give back to God in a way more, than in, just in the way, you can't give back more, just in a way that he's already blessed us. And so this is our opportunity right now. Again, uh, if you can see on the screens, I think that's, well, if you see on the screens what you'll see there, you'll see our cash app. There you go, uh, the big one, so I didn't have to read them all out for you. Amen. Amen. Uh, now, with that being said, I'm going to lift up this prayer and we'll have some music from our uh, music team. And following that, our pastor will come forward uh, with uh, any announcements that he has. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for who you are and for all that you've done. Oh God, for the blessing of this offering, we say thank you. God, as we prepare to give on this day, oh God, we ask that we are, we ask for the willingness to give with a smile on our face, with our hearts open and full, excited about the fact that we can give back to the kingdom work that you have for us here on earth. So love, Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. for worship sometime because our body is telling us it's 9-18 service about to start but we find ourselves in church worshiping still and so let's try that one more time good morning hey man I love turning the chapel uh, it's a Glorious day. Anybody just glad to be in church this morning? Amen. Amen. It's good to see you all. Just look at your neighbor and it says, it's good to see you this morning. Look at somebody and say, it's good to see you. Amen. Amen. It's good to see you. Um, again, let us show up, the Reverend Don said, for our church anniversary next week. Bishop Davis, our awesome bishop, he's the bishop of the second Episcopal district, will be with us, so let us show up. I want to extend my thanks 
and appreciation to uh, Brother Kevin Turner and Brother Bobby from Barron for giving us an awesome leading facilitating and an awesome financial empowerment conference on Friday and Saturday. All of the committee members and all of those who volunteer and all those who served our panelists and everything yesterday was just awesome. In fact, I was so blessed the Lord dropped something in my spirit that I need to discuss with Brother Kevin and Brother Bobby, but it was a blessing yesterday. Now, I believe that the best way of giving to the Lord and blessing the kingdom is by being a good steward of what God has given you. That's, that's personally my giving to God's work has increased because I have tried, my wife and I, we've tried to be good stewards of what God has blessed us with. There was a time when I was not a good steward and my wife threatened me. She did. And, uh, and so I had to do better. And the word is, if you know better, can I say that? If you want to know better, you'll do better. And so we need to do better with, uh, and, and even if you are not in debt, even if you got everything straight, you can still come and learn something. Because it's more than just paying off your debt. There, there's, there's, there's more than that. So we praise God for an awesome uh, financial empowerment conference on yesterday. Again, our young people, our adults, they've been training, they've been um, practicing, rehearsing for the spring production. They cannot come and see people who are not members of Turner Chapel. They expect that we will show up and support them. And so please purchase a ticket, invite somebody to the spring production also, and come also for uh, what the drama ministry is doing on Friday uh, to dramatize the uh, seven last words of Jesus Christ. So let us support what we're trying to do. Amen, somebody? Um, let's support what we're trying to do. Now, I will ask a question, and I would like you to raise your hand, but I would say don't do it. And the question is, who invited somebody to church? Who shared your faith? Okay, I said, you know. We, we're still, amen. God bless you all. Yeah, in fact, if you invited somebody, just wave your hand. Amen, praise the Lord. So, so hopefully next week when we ask this question, more hands will be raised because get this, unless you want your own private pew in the church. It meant somebody. Unless you feel comfortable sitting in a pew where you can just lay back and just sleep if you want to. We need to go out and share our faith. We need to go out and invite people to church. Make it a habit. When you're in a restaurant eating and, a, and you know you're being served, ask the person, do you know Jesus Christ? Where do you go to church? Come to turn a chapel. Wherever you are, make it a part of your lifestyle. Amen, somebody? Let's do that. Let's grow together. Look at your neighbor and say, let's grow together. Let's grow our church. Let's grow our church. I'm so excited for the work here at Turner Chapel. Amen. I'm so excited. But God is depending on you to go out there and share your faith. Be excited about what God is doing here at Turner Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church. Amen, somebody? Let's do that. And then finally, well, I got two more things to do. I just want to extend 
Uh, congratulations to my lovely wife, the mother of Tayo and Tarita, your first lady, who on this gone Thursday successfully defended her dissertation. Congratulations, love. It was a blessing to hear her advisor, faculty advisor say, now you are Dr. Rita Wright. I told Tarita, I said, Tarita, how does it feel being in a house with two doctors? And she said, Daddy, um, it, it just puts a little bit more pressure on us to do more than what we're doing. But love, I'm proud of you. Congratulations, you've done well. And her graduation is on April the 30th. She and her son will be graduating this year. So we praise God for that. We have few people who completed the new members class. And so Sister Lady Brown, thank you and your team for how you continue to serve well. And uh, Amen. Mr. Marvin. Thank you. Sister Michelle. Thank you. Reverend Nicole. Amen. Brother Wayne. Now, I believe Reverend. God is tough on when I got to. Reverend Nicole was in the mall. And she saw the billboard for Turner Chapel in the mall. All right. All right. The billboard invited her to church. <laughs> and she joined. Amen. Amen. I just said something, y'all. Amen. Amen. So it's good to see you all. Um, ask you one or two questions to you in God's presence and this congregation renew your baptismal vows and promise to keep it at all time. Your answer is I do. I do. do you have saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Your answer is I have. I have. Do you have good feelings? Good feelings with everyone in this church. Now you got to answer truthfully now. <laughs> your answer is I do. And will you cheerfully obey the discipline of the AME Church, hold sacred the ordinances of God, and look after your brothers and sisters' welfare? Your answer is, I will. I will. Will you give willingly? That's the word, willingly to the church and its various ministry as God has blessed you. Your answer is, I will. I will. You may turn to the church. Just turn around, please, for one minute. Turn to chapel. You have heard these questions and the answer is, do you have any reason why these persons should not be part of our church? No. I can't hear you. No. Amen. So with that said, we welcome you to Turner Chapel. We pray that each of you will be a useful part of our church and you will serve well. Just turn around one more time. Let me shake your hands. As the first lady will leave some of the officers to shake your hand. Also, Brother Melvin. Harris. Welcome, Brother Harris. Amen. And this is a love to well, Sister Michelle Harris. Yes. God bless you. Thank Welcome. You. Reverend Nicole Wallace. Wallace. Walker. God bless you. And Brother Wayne. God bless you, man. Look at you, Hurley. Amen. Welcome. Hey, walk up. Uh, Sister Lady, God bless you. Thank you so much.
scripture now. We have a selection and then a word. This morning our scripture is coming from the book of Exodus NIV version. Third chapter. Verse through the 16th verses. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that Though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they asked me, what is his name? then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. The name you shall call me from generation to generation. Go, assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and have seen what has been done to you in Egypt. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord.
to somebody in church this morning. I said, God has been faithful to somebody in church this morning. I just say it again, God has been faithful to somebody in church this morning. Somebody got a testimony of God's faithfulness. Somebody knows that God is faithful this morning. And you're not ashamed to wave your hand. You're not ashamed to say thank you, Jesus. You've been so faithful to me. You're not ashamed to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God been good to me. God been faithful to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you've been faithful. Hallelujah. He healed somebody's body. He delivered oh. somebody. He made a way for somebody. He's been oh, faithful, y'all. He has been so, so, so faithful. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God been faithful to me. God been faithful. To me, be faithful to my family. You made a way. Hallelujah. 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 I know what I'm talking about. Faithful, 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 faithful
It's good to know that we serve a fit for God. It's good to know that. It's good to know we serve a faithful God. God, this morning we want to say thank you for your faithfulness. We can never repay you for everything you've done for us. If we had 10,000 times, we still can't praise you enough. We miss an hour, but we did not miss your presence. You woke us up this morning. You allowed us to see this beautiful day that you've created. We could have been anywhere else, but this morning we're in church in person and we're in church virtually. For that we say thank you. For that we praise you, O oh God. You've been faithful. We look back all our lives and we see where you've taken us from. We see all of the things you brought us over. And this morning we just want to say thank you. This morning we just want to praise your name. This morning we want to bless your name. We are not ashamed, oh God, to declare that you are our God. And you've been faithful. And so we thank you this morning. We thank you this morning. We thank you this morning. Now, Holy Spirit, there's four fresh on your man's servant. Touch my tongue live cold on my tongue burn within me oh God and every spirit that would try to manifest itself in this room that is not of you every contrary spirit that would try to bring about distraction and dullness and hard and hard we rebuke we bound it we render it powerless in the name of Jesus Holy Spirit saturate this place Continue, oh God, to saturate this place. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Come and give God some praise one more time. Put together those sanctified hands. Put together those sanctified hands. And bless him with the fruit of your lips. Tell him thank you one more time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Michael, for reading the scripture. Thank you. Thank you, praise team. Lord, have mercy. You all bless us this morning. Thank you, Ben. It's a blessing this morning. We thank God for you all this morning. You know, this is worship, y'all. And if by now you have not felt something, uh, then maybe it's time that we lay hands. But the presence of the Lord is in this place. Exodus chapter 3. Now, the Lord led me to this text this week. And now, thinking about it, led me to this text. And let me just lift up verses 10 and 11. Since Reverend Graham read it for us, verses 10 and 11. So now, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I? Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Who am I? And as I was reading this, so many subjects came into mind, so many things came into mind. Preachers, you all know that. You know, you got one, two, three, you wonder which one can you tie in? You know what I'm talking about? And so the best I could come up with this morning and, uh, was God's presence is all you need. 
God's presence is all you need. Somebody say, God's presence is all I need. Amen. Many, many, many of us struggle with the feeling of inadequacy. I'm not good enough. I remember when the thought came to me that uh, there's a possibility the bishop could appoint you the pastor of Turner Chapel. Lord, have mercy. You being me, T Boone, me, Toyway, me, Pastor of Turner Chapel, AME Church. Reverend Don, to be honest with you, I felt that I was not good enough. I was not trained enough. I was not equipped enough. I felt that the shoes that I had to put on, helped by my predecessor, Dr. Marcus, was just too big for me. And I was threatened and fearful. Anybody ever been confronted with a situation where you felt that I cannot step into this role because it's just too hard for me? Anybody been there before? Where, where a door is about to be open for you, an opportunity is about to be available, and you say, no, 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 no. No, I, I remember my wife said to me, she, she went down to this conference in Fardaston and, and it's a conference wherein they had all of the, the doctoral program and they selected a few of them to present their work. And, and she, she said that, you know, a bunch of them went around from all of the doctoral schools in Georgia and she, she had her, her poster and everything there set up and... Um, and, and at the end of the conference, they started to give an award, or they started to, to award those who presented. And they called the first name, and she just got on her phone and was like, I know that's not me. I'm not going to win anything. Brother Kevin. And then they called the second place winner. She checked out of the conference. And then they called her name. She won the first place. And somebody had to say, Rita, they just caught. She said, me? <laughs> Sometimes we do not think that we are good enough. We feel limited in so many ways. And sometimes we surrender to our limitations. And we do not experience the best that God has for us. We do not experience the best that God has. Well, I feel someone this morning has some doubts. Someone this morning has some serious doubts about moving forward, but the devil is a liar. Hallelujah, somebody. Because God will show us this morning in this story of Moses how Moses felt that he could not and God reminded him Yes, you can. Hallelujah, somebody. So Moses encounters God at the lowest point, point of his life. He was going through a difficult time. I strongly believe this encounter Moses had with God at the lowest point of his life and how God's promise help him will help some of us this morning. We, we know the story of Moses. It starts in chapter number two. You know, I, I don't have the time to go through all of the story this morning. But we know that Pharaoh decided to kill all the male babies. And, and Moses' mother came up with a strategy to protect her baby. It meant somebody... She came up with this strategy to protect Moses and Pharaoh's daughter was able to bring Moses into the home. And so Moses grew up in the home of Pharaoh's daughter and we can assume that he also grew up in Pharaoh's home also. He had the best Egypt ha 
had to offer at his disposal. However, growing up, his biological mother who nursed him, who fed him, who clothed him, who took care of him, remind of, reminded him of who he was. I, I believe she told him, never forget your rich heritage. For you are of the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Never forget you have Hebrew blood running warm in your veins. See, some people, when God blesses them, they forget or intentionally do not want to remember where God took them from. I mean, I'm thinking about Clarence Thomas, y'all. I'm thinking about Ben Carson, y'all. I'm thinking about Candace Owens, y'all. They, they forget where God has taken them from. Turn your Bible to Deut Deuteronomy 8, 10, and 14. Deuteronomy 8, 10, and 14. Let me see. Let me just read it. From you. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord. Your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I have given you this day. Otherwise, when you eat, somebody say eat, and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, get this, and when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become what? And you will forget the Lord God, your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. God is telling them, don't forget. In Esther chapter 4 verse 12, Mordecai reminded Esther, do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. He says there, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows that, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time like this. Tell your neighbor, please don't forget. Don't forget, don't forget. And so one day Moses saw the opportunity and he took advantage of it. We know the story. Hallelujah, somebody. In chapter 2, saw this Egyptian beating a Hebrew. And he took matters in his hands. And we know what he did. He killed the Egyptian bury his body. And the next day, the Bible said he saw two Hebrews fighting each other. And he decided to intervene. And then he said, why are you all beating each other? And the other one said to him, do you want to do to us what you did to the Egyptian yesterday? Get this, somebody. Somebody is always watching. Somebody is always watching you. You may think that you're able to cover your tracks. You may think that you have everything in place, but somebody is always watching you. The Bible says Moses ran away. He ran for his life. That his life was in danger and, became, and he became a shepherd. The prince of Egypt became a shepherd. This was a fall from grace to disgrace. Being the prince of Egypt and taking care of sheep was a fall 
from grace to disgrace. You know how I know that? Because Joseph in Genesis chapter 46, verse number 34, when he bring his father and his brothers came to meet Pharaoh, Joseph told them, he said, get this, tell Pharaoh who you are, what you all do. He said, because shepherds are detestable in the eyes of the Egyptians. And so Moses, moving from a prince to being a shepherd, was a fall from grace to disgrace. And for 40 years, while taking care of the sheep, Moses had to wonder, what if? Anybody ever been down what if avenue? Anybody ever been down what if boulevard? He had a wonder, get this, did I do the right thing? 40 years taking care of the sheep every morning, every night. That's 14,600 days. That's 2,080 weeks. That's 480 months. 40 years Moses had to wonder what if. Oh, but it was in this moment of despair, y'all. It's in this moment of desperation that God showed up. Hallelujah, somebody. God has a way of showing up when we think that everything has been lost. God has a way of showing up when we think there is no more hope left. Has God shown up in anybody's life? Hallelujah, somebody. Bible says in Psalm 4, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. When grief has taken over you, God has a way of showing up. When people turn their backs on you, God has a way of showing up. When life is going in the wrong direction, God has a way of showing up. And when God shows up, God tells you, I am working in all things for your good. When God shows up, God reminds you, though weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Am I talking to somebody here today? When God shows up, God tells you no weapon formed against you will prosper and every tongue that rise against you I will condemn when God shows up doesn't matter what the doctor says doesn't matter what your boss says doesn't matter what your neighbor says when God shows up he brings joy he brings peace he brings hope when God shows up all of a sudden you realize that you are somebody tell somebody God is able God is able God has a way of showing up but when things are not working well so Moses is on the mountain Moses is on the mountain taking care of the sheep and he sees the bush on fire. Kept looking, but it was not burning. And he decided to go closer, and he heard the voice, Moses, Moses, stop where you are. Take off your sandals, because you are on holy ground. It meant somebody, one of these days, I preach up a God's holy ground. Amen, somebody. And Moses, and God told Moses, he said, I've seen the mystery of my people. I've heard what they're going through. And I've come to give you a task. I've come to give you a mission. Go and tell Pharaoh to let my people. Me? Yeah. 
Moses asked God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh to bring the Israelite out of Egypt? Who am I? You got the wrong man. Did you read my resume? Do you not know that I'm a fugitive from justice? Do you not know I'm a murderer? Moses tells God, I'm not in the emancipation business anymore. I'm just taking care of sheep now. Listen, let me tell somebody quickly and then I'll move on. The phrase, who am I? comes from an eternal conscious or unconscious evaluation, self-evaluation. Who am I? An eternal conscious or unconscious self-evaluation. Moses' evaluation of himself was based on his circumstances. It meant somebody. And many times we are quick to believe or we are quick to have a self-evaluation based on what we can see or our circumstances rather than on what God is saying to us. We look around and we say, no, that's not me. No, I'm not good enough. Sometimes we fall into the trap of comparing ourselves with the standard of other people. And when we are unable to measure up, we feel depressed and less than. Someone once said, God is not expecting you to come up to the standard he has for others. Just to the one he has for you. I just want to drop that in somebody's spirit this morning. God is not expecting you to measure up to the standard of somebody else. He's just expecting you to measure up to the standard that he set for you. And that's why faithfulness is all about. Faithfulness is being everything that God has created you to be. Faithfulness is not being like Pastor Bright. Faithfulness is not being like Reverend Dunn. Faithfulness is not being like somebody else. Faithfulness is being who God created you to be. And can I tell you this morning, when God created you, he said it is good. <laughs> when God created you, he put himself in you. That's why you laugh the way you laugh. That's why you talk the way you talk. That's why you do what you do. Because you are you need there is not another you you have been created in the image and the likeness of God stop comparing yourself with other people and start walking the way God has created you to walk stop comparing yourself with other people and know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made know that God has a unique anointing on your life Stop, stop, stop comparing yourself with other people. Other times our limitations come from what happened to us in the past. Helping somebody this morning. For many of us, our past continues to hunt us every day. Somebody wants to love you and care for you, but you cannot trust to love again because of what they did to you in the past. Left you heartbroken, and you can't find a way to love again. You confided into somebody, and now your business is out there. Now they're telling you, go and see the counselor, the therapist. But you don't trust to tell anybody your business anymore. Last time you tried to work in a ministry, you had a bad experience. 
And now you say, I ain't going to work in a ministry anymore. I'm just going to sit on my gift. Moses, for 40 years, was a radical, a firebrand ready to take action. But now the fire has grown dim. The activist has become slow and very reluctant. The drum has faded away. So the question this morning is what is in your past that prevents you from moving forward? Hallelujah, somebody. Moses, get this, Moses did not believe in himself. In fact, he stopped believing in himself. Oh, but God did not stop believing in Moses. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody this morning. Somebody needs to know God believes in you. Look at your neighbor and it's a neighbor. I know God believes in you. Hallelujah, somebody. The world may not believe in you. Your family may not believe in you. Your friends may not believe in you. You may not even believe in yourself. But I got good news this morning. God believes in you. God is telling you, I believe in you. Greater to see that is in you than he that is in this world. God is saying, I believe in you. You are more than a conqueror. God is saying, I believe in you. I know what you can do because I'm going to put myself in you. And so Moses asked God the question, who am I? And God makes this promise to Moses, I will be with you. Hallelujah, somebody. I know your circumstances. I know your past. I know your pain. I know your hurt. I know what they did to you. But I will make this promise to you. I will be with you. There is something about God's presence. When God said, I will be with you, God is saying my presence will go with you. Doesn't matter what happened yesterday. Doesn't matter what people say about you. Doesn't matter where you come from. Doesn't matter what your parents call you. God said, I will be with you. Hallelujah, somebody. When God says that, God saying, when I'm with you, doors will open. When I'm with you, demons will bow. When I'm with you, breakthrough will take place. When I'm with you, deliverance will take place. Don't matter what you say. Doesn't matter your educational background. Doesn't matter whether you have money or not. God said, I am the I am. I walk with you. I talk with you. I let the world know that I am with you. Is God with anybody this morning? God brings favor. God brings healing. God brings deliverance. God brings breakthrough. Somebody said, God, I need your presence. God, I need your presence this morning. Walk with me. Talk with me. Say yes, somebody. And, and, and because of that, Moses was able to part the Red Sea. Because of that, Moses was able to bring about the 10 plagues in Egypt. I don't know about you, but I want God to be with me. God said, Moses, forget about your past. Forget about your circumstances. I will be with you. Now, 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 now get this. Uh, Isaiah, when he was talking about Jesus, he, he said, uh, his name shall be called what? Wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. But when Jesus was born, y'all, uh, there was another name. There was another name given him. Say, so his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with 
us. Hallelujah, somebody. I don't know what you're going through this morning, but if God is with you, who can be against you? If God is with you, there is no power in hell. There is no power under hell that will stop the power of God. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout glory. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. I want God to walk with me. Is there anybody here this morning? You want God to be with you? Stand up on your feet. Raise your hand. And say, God, be with me. Emmanuel, my Jesus, walk with me. Walk with my family. Walk with my children. Walk everywhere I walk. Be everywhere I am. Is there anybody this morning? Raise your hand. And say, God, I'm available. Let your presence be with me. Say yes, yeah, somebody. God, God tells Moses, I will be with you. I, I heard David say it in Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will what? Somebody say it loud. Because thou art with me. Listen, y'all. He said, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. You gotta go through the rivers, I'll, even through the fire, you will not burn because I am with you. Start acting that God is with you. Can I say that one more time? Start acting like God is with you. Look at your neighbor as a neighbor. Start acting like God is with you. Look at somebody else and say, start acting like God is with you. Now is God with anybody in the house? When God is with you, you walk in victory, y'all. When God is with you, you walk in victory. I just want to see two or three people walking in victory because you know God is with you. Walk with an attitude. Walk with your chest up. Walk with your shoulders up. And start acting that God is with you. This week, something good is coming your way. This week, God will open a door for you. This week, God will make something happen. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout glory. I said this week, this week, expect something from God. Because God is with you. Because God is with you. Because God is with you. This week, this week, somebody shout glory. He tells Moses, I am with you. Since the lady was five years ago, six years ago almost, when God reminded me of this also. He said, I've not given you a spirit of fear, but that of power. Love and a sound mind. He said, Tell your way. I will be with you. You won't have to walk this pastoral road all by yourself. I will be with you. I look back. And I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you for picking me up. Thank you for carrying me in your arms. 
Thank you. Let me encourage somebody this morning. God is saying the same thing to you. I know right now it doesn't look that way. That's what happened to Moses. But God is telling him, God told him, I'll be with you. Turn whatever is going on in your life to God. Turn it over to God. Turn it over to God and see what God would do. Let us all stand for a minute, if you can, if you can, if you can. There are some people, you're viewing this service right now. You may view it later on. But I want to speak to you virtually. Before I speak to the folks in here, sometimes I speak to these folks here first. But let me speak to you and tell you whatever is going on in your life, you are not alone. God is with you. Now, let me speak to you all. But instead of me speaking to you all, I want your neighbor to speak to you. And just tell somebody God is with you. Just tell somebody, I mean, sometimes, I mean, you, you gotta look at somebody. You don't know what they're going through and you gotta say it like you mean it. Just tell them God is with you. God is with you. You may be grieving right now, but God is with you. You may be sick right now, but God is with you. You may be going through some financial problems right now, but God is with you. And the good news is, where you are, you are sitting by somebody who's a witness that I've been there before. And God brought me through. That's the joy of it. I've been there before. And God brought me through. We're about to go home. But we can't leave this place. Unless we are sure that we all know Jesus Christ in the pardon of our sins. We can't leave this place without giving you the opportunity that we have to know Jesus Christ for yourself. We cannot leave this place not knowing that you came to join a church where you could grow. We want to make sure that you have that opportunity. And so we got preachers who are here. If you're here this morning and you want to give your life to the Lord, if you're here this morning and you want to join the church, if you're here this morning and you want to rededicate your life, the first thing I would like you to do, because just bow your heads, please, for a minute. Just bow your heads for a minute. Is just raise your hand. Just if you're here, you want to give your life to the Lord, or you want to join the church, or you want to rededicate your, your life, just raise your hand. Are you in the house? Amen. Now, if your hand is raised, you may come forward. You can open your eyes. Is there anybody else? see a young man coming down. Is there anybody else in the house this morning? Is there anybody else this morning? There is your day you want to give your life to the Lord. You want to join the church. You want to rededicate your life to the Lord. Is there another person this morning? There is your day. Is there another person this morning? Is there another person this morning? Is there another person this morning? There is your day. Is there another person this morning? Is there another person to rest your day? Is there another person? Amen. Is there another person to rest your day? For those who are joining, viewing this worship service virtually, you can give your life to the Lord. Just ask him into your heart and he will come in. Is there another person? Amen. Reverend John, is there a decision there? He's joining. This young man, what's his name? Deuce. Deuce. What's the last name, Deuce? Johnson. Deuce Johnson is joining the church today. Come and give God some praise. How old are you, Deuce? 
Deuce is 17 years old. And then Brother Mark, I believe he came now for prayer. Amen. Deuce, God bless you. There's a parents. Oh Lord, good mama crying. I cry too. Amen. Last week, we had one of our young people in the young youth church to give their life to the Lord. And it was such a joy. So we praise God for that. Amen. Amen. God is with you. God is with us. We will not fear what comes our way because God is with us. We're about to leave right after they get through pray. You, you may be seated for a minute, please. Amen. God bless you all. What's us? Uh, where is he? Brother Derek, Brother Derek should have been the fifth person to be received as a full member, but he, but he came a little bit late, but it's not too late, amen somebody, it is never too late, Brother Derek, do you love everybody in this church, you love Brother Derek, welcome to Turner Chopper, God bless you. You have a blessed week and a blessed day. Remember Bible studies on Wednesday. Now you can go home and recover. Thank you so much for coming. You can go and catch a nap and make up for the one hour. Amen, somebody? Receive the benediction now. You may stand if you can. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you this week and remind you that you are not alone. But he's with you. He's with you. He's with you. Let he give you his peace that you will walk in confidence knowing God is with you. It is in Jesus' name we pray now and forever. Somebody say amen. amen.